You may have noticed that, excepting the occasional zombie apocalypse, we humans tend to function best with our nervous systems intact and our brains, limbs, and major organs all connected and happily communicating with each other. Well, we feel it's our duty to inform you that not all creatures are quite so picky when it comes to the intactness of their bodies. Hello, and today we will talk about terrifying creatures that keep going after they're dead. Headless Snakes When faced with a venomous snake, most people's natural reaction would fall into one of three categories. Fleeing, freezing on the spot, or, oh god, oh god, kill it, chop off its evil pointy head. While the latter course of action may seem like the surefire way to avoid getting bitten, it turns out that might not be the case. What makes this abomination possible? The snake has heat-sensitive pits at either side of its face, which it uses to detect threats. And let's face it, if you're close enough for your body heat to be detected, you're close enough to be considered a threat. These heat-sensitive pits are capable of detecting a threatening presence for hours after death, which means the snake may continue to defend itself. And yes, this applies even if the body is no longer attached. Getting bitten by a dead snake can make you just as dead as getting bitten by a living one. So what we're telling you here, we guess, is that a severed snakehead not only refuses to die, but its felt new bodiless form can perform freaking acrobatics to get at you with its poisonous bits. Cockroaches Cockroaches are infamous for their tenacity and are often cited as the most likely survivors of a nuclear war. Some even claim that they can live without their heads. It turns out that these armchair exterminators are right. Headless roaches are capable of living for weeks. To understand why cockroaches can survive decapitation, it helps to understand why humans cannot, explains physiologist and biochemist Joseph Kunkel, who studies cockroach development. First off, decapitation in humans results in blood loss and a drop in blood pressure hampering transport of oxygen and nutrition to vital tissues. You'd bleed to death, Kunkel notes. They don't have a huge network of blood vessels like that of humans, or tiny capillaries that you need a lot of pressure to flow blood through. After you cut their heads off, very often their necks would seal off just by clotting. There's no uncontrolled bleeding. Chickens. If you chop the head off a chicken, it can still run around for a few seconds. The animals can do this because a neural network in the spinal cord is pre-programmed to direct the muscles in various frequently used movement patterns such as running. Despite intense research into how the body, the brain, and the nervous system works, scientists still do not have a clear picture of how nerve cells communicate to perform certain movements. Octopus. Octopus tentacles still react up to an hour after being severed from their dead owner, and even try to pick up food and feed a phantom mouth. In one experiment, researchers chopped off euthanized octopus's tentacles, chilled them in water for an hour, and then still managed to get a split-second response when they probed the severed limbs. Other research found that, when encountering a piece of food, a severed limb will snatch it up and try to move it in the direction of a phantom octopus mouth. While cut-off limbs do not regrow a new octopus, a la starfish, the octopus can regenerate tentacles with a far superior quality than, say, a lizard's oftentimes gimpy replacement tail. To do this, octopus use a protein called ACHE. Humans have this protein, too, but our store of the molecule is much less active than an octopus. Flatworms. Everyone knows the myth about earthworms. If you cut them in half, you get two worms. Nothing could be further from the truth, alas. However, if the earthworm is replaced by a flatworm, the two parts can survive these childish experiments. What's more, be it skin, intestine, or brain, the body part lost through cutting will simply grow again in a matter of days. The creatures involved here are planarians, a class of flatworms that are so flat that they need neither lungs nor a heart to take in and distribute oxygen in their bodies. So simple and yet so ingenious? It would appear so. Regeneration studies involving these animals have shown that a dismembered planarian can generate several hundred tiny animals, hence they could almost be called immortal under the edge of a knife. Frogs. 
Thanks to the let's jump out its brain and see what the hell happens approach to science taken by 19th century neurologist David Ferrier, we can tell you. A headed but brainless frog actually behaves very similar to a frog with its gray matter perfectly intact. If you turn it upside down, it will right itself. If you pinch its feet, it will hop away. If you put it in water, it will swim to the side and climb out. And perhaps most disturbing of all, it will even croak contentedly if you stroke its back. The first factor that results in frogs' zombie-like tendencies is the power of the reflex reaction, which fires the necessary electrical impulses that cause a muscle to expand or contract. The second factor comes into play, the relative simplicity of a frog's anatomy. The lack of brain results only in a lack of spontaneity, and Ferrier noted that if energy can be artificially supplied, the frog will continue to respond to external stimuli for an indefinite period. Flies Female fruit flies will live for several days after they have been decapitated. Such beheaded females assume an upright stance comparable to that of a normal fly, and can and do engage in complex actions such as preening, flying, and, under duress, walking. Although species-specific variations occur, males will court their decapitated females. All decapitated females of a species studied to date treat the courting overtures of the males as if they were noxious foreign stimuli. First of all, surviving without a head is not as impossible as one might imagine, provided one has something almost like a spare brain in their chest that manages walking, flying, and other day-to-day -day things like circulation and respiration. Turtles If you chop the head off a turtle, it can still swim. The turtle frequently uses swimming movements, so it makes sense for it to have a neural network in the spinal cord pre-programmed to perform swimming movements when the nerve cells are stimulated. This means that the nerve cells do not need specific signals from the brain to prompt a coordinated activation of the muscles required to perform a swimming stroke. As long as the neural network is generally stimulated for movement, it is already pre-programmed to activate some specific muscles to perform the swimming strokes in coordination. This makes it much simpler and easier for the brain to send movement impulses down the spinal cord. Salamanders Salamanders can regrow entire limbs and regenerate parts of major organs, an ability that relies on their immune systems, research now shows. A study of the axolotl, an aquatic salamander, reveals that immune cells called macrophages are critical in the early stages of regenerating lost limbs. Wiping out these cells permanently prevented regeneration and led to tissue scarring. The findings hint at possible strategies for tissue repair in humans. To investigate the role of macrophages in salamander limb regeneration, the researchers injected the animals with a chemical substance that destroys or depletes these cells. The macrophagy levels were either partially or fully depleted. Salamanders that had all their macrophages removed failed to generate new limbs and showed substantial scar tissue buildup. Salamanders that had only some of their macrophages could still regenerate their limbs, but more slowly than normal. Once the salamanders replenished their macrophagy levels, the researchers reamputated the animal's limb stumps, which then fully regenerated at the normal rate. Collectively, these findings suggest microphages are essential to the salamander's remarkable wound healing abilities.